Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show. Today we are going to discuss 11 habits you need to give uh, up to be happy. There are a lot of things that we do in life uh, that uh, bring us down. Uh, you could have a job where you have either a boss or employee constantly knocking you, giving you negative feedback, and that could bring you down. So you need to get in the habit of trying to overcome that. It could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could just be society in itself sometimes. These 11 habits you need to give up to be happy will be discussed today on uh, Take Your Life Back Today show. I want to give a shout out to Larry Geist from the Geist Academy at 516-485-2741. That's 516-485-2741. Larry Geist is an addiction recovery coach. He is a life coach. He, like myself, will walk with you step by step from your addiction to your recovery, from your uh, down uh, uh, stages in life, from your depression to happiness to, to bring you up. We will teach you. He, Larry Geis from the Geis Academy, will teach you never ever to give up. He will show you the way to look for positive in any negative situation. He will show you how to live in recovery. He will explain it to you. He will never ever, and I promise you, he will never ever talk about your past. Get in touch with him. Go and Google him on www.odysseyconsultant.org or give him a call at 516-485-2741. And when you speak to Larry Geis, you tell him that you heard about him on the Take Your Life Back Today show with me, Ralph Friedrichs. GlobalEyeglasses.com, where they are focused on saving you money. They just recently opened another website called www.iglasio.com. That's, I believe it's uh, I glassio.com folks if you want to focus on saving money if you want to get new eyeglasses if you want to get a frame whether it be round square oval or oblong over 1200 frames you can find on www.globaleyeglasses.com excuse me dot com you will be able to find all these things on their website if you need help you can call me at 844-405-HELP you can text me at 51, excuse me, 631-599-0218. I will help you. I have over 30 years experience. Hundreds of you have already texted or called me. I look forward to helping you. I can put you into those great progressives. I can, uh, I can help you with your uh, transitions. I can help you with uh, your uh, polarization. All that is available on GlobalEyeglasses.com. I'm not sure about the other website, what the exact name is. I have to look that up, so don't take my word for it. Strike that last one until the next show. Um, I believe it's either Global Eyeglassio or it is Eyeglass... I think it is... Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure, but I will discuss that on the next show. But for now, go to www.globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving money. And I am focused on helping you with your eyeglasses. Just get in touch with me. Please get in touch with me and I will help you. 11 habits you, my friend, need to give up to be happy. Are your habits and routines sucking up your happiness? Oftentimes, we unknowingly hold on to little obsessive habits that cause us a great deal of stress and unhappiness. Even when we feel something is wrong, we fail to seek the changes and we need to make and instead cling on to what's not working simply because it's what we are used to. It's time to make a change. The time is here today. It's time to give up the habits that no longer serve your well-being and embrace the positive changes you need to be happy. Today is the perfect day to give up on certain, particularly 11 items. Number one is worrying about everything. Worry is the biggest happiness slayer ever. Worry steals all your attention and gives the illusion that you are working through a problem when you're really not working through it. People worry for all sorts of reasons to escape reality, the fear of unknown, resistance to change, lack of confidence, etc. Stop worrying today. Like everything else, takes a lot of practice. The more you do it, the better you will become in discerning when you are no longer controlling your thoughts and they are controlling you. Here is a tip on number one, which is worrying about everything. To jolt yourself out of worry, ask yourself what you can do right now to make your life more pleasant, and then, my friend, do that. Number two, constant, deliberate people-pleasing. 
contrary to what you may think, saying yes to every request that is made of you is not that great. It's not nice. First, it is not nice to you because it can leave you emotionally, mentally, and physically totally drained. And secondly, it is not nice to the other person because it deceives them into thinking that you have the time, the energy, and the resources available to make what they want happen uh, happen because you are making them feel that way. Generally, people who carry out the duties of others at uh, the expense of themselves have low self-esteem, self-esteem, and low, uh, excuse me, and high levels of happiness. They need to, they need the approval of others to make themselves feel worthy. Here's a tip for number two: to constant, deliberate, and people pleasing. To combat people-pleasing behavior, learn to say no. Oftentimes when you say no to someone else, you are really saying yes to you. Number three, procrastinating. Procrastination is stagnation. There is no other way to say it. When you procrastinate, nothing good in your life is happening. When we procrastinate uh, for all sorts of reasons, when we are afraid of the outcome, uh, when we are unsure how to complete the task and when we just don't feel like taking action. And the thing is, we spend more time aggravating ourselves rather than just doing it. More often than not, if you start your task, you will be pleasantly surprised at how easily you are able to accomplish that task. Here's a tip for number three, which is procrastinating. When you feel yourself getting ready to procrastinate, silently say stop to yourself. Number four is living in the past. The past is gone for good, and yet we spend so much time thinking about what happened yesterday at the complete expense of today. Today is just flying by. Keeping your thoughts stuck in the past is especially detrimental to your contentment. You are a product of your environment. Your environment has helped to shape how you think and feel about yourself. Everyone has been presented with life changes along the journey of life. You aren't alone, my friend. It is whether you are stuck in the patterns of the past or have moved past them. Tip, here's a tip for number four, which is living in the past. If you are harboring resentment, anger, frustration, or other negative feelings from the past, don't ignore these feelings. Do something constructive about it so you, you can move on and stick with the present. Number five. Always looking past the present moment is anticipation of the next. We spend so much time in the moment wanting to be in the next one that we are missing our lives presently. For example, while taking a shower, you might be thinking about a cup of coffee you want to make, and while you're drinking your coffee, you might be thinking of your commute to work. You never consciously present right where you are and therefore cannot enjoy the moment you are in, the moment we call life now present life here's a tip now is the only time you have now is life make sure you are fully experiencing it number six a huge one judging others folks when you judge someone else you suffer it is an outward display of inward inferiority and anger no one person is better than another the individual who cleans the bathroom at a fast food restaurant is no less the person of, of a person than the CEO, CEO behind a desk at a big corporation. Here's a tip about judging others. Understand that we are all part of collective human race. We are one. Your joy is my joy and your suffering is my suffering. Number seven, comparing your story to everyone else's. It is good to notice what others are doing from time to time. After all, what is what helps us outline what we want and don't want in our lives. But comparing yourself to everyone else's every step of the way is way too far uh, uh, to, to start worrying about other people and to, to really jump into their private lives. You know when this happens, when you stop living your dreams and start living their life, their dreams. Here is a tip to combat that. You are unique. No matter how hard you Try to be like someone else, you will never be them, and you shouldn't want to be them because you should want to be you. Number eight, shame. Shame is a deep, debilitating emotion with complex roots. Its cousins are guilt, humiliation, 
uh, demoralization and denigration and remorse. After experiencing a traumatic event, whether recent or in the distant past, shame can haunt victims in a powerful and uh, unrecognized manner. Shame impairs the healing recovery process, causing victims of trauma to stay frozen, unable to forgive themselves for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Shame leaves the victim's feelings with sadness and pain to the core of their being. They are unable to feel the fullness of their lives and in, uh, the joy in their lives. If you feel any shame at all, acknowledge it up front. Decide to experiment on forgiving yourself and letting go of the shame. How long can you go without reminding yourself about the shameful thoughts you're feeling? How would life be different or better if you were able to forgive yourself? Who can you talk to about this? Here's a tip. The more you forgive yourself, the more time you have to focus on uh, being happier with yourself. Number nine, disorganization and laziness. We complain that there are not enough hours in a day to accomplish all that we want to accomplish, yet our laziness often leads us to many wasteful hours of disorganization. The discipline it takes to sort through a messy desk, counter, closet, uh, or mind take uh, take time. Becoming organized is a habit. Start with something small like your office desk or even making your bed after you get up and that is starting to get a routine. It's starting to come up with a daily uh, a chore and it's organized. Here's a tip. Studies have shown that people who make their beds are statistically more productive, profitable, peaceful in their lives and careers. Interesting, isn't it? But, not surprising, because they have committed to doing something each and every day. Number 10, fear of everything. Fear is one of the biggest reasons why we don't move ahead in our lives. Fear of failing and fear of succeeding. Fear of the unknown. Fear of fear. As long as we're alive, we are prone to some level of fear. Ironically, to feel alive, we must overcome the fear in action. This... Uh, of course, was now written prior to the Bill Crosby uh, situation, but I'm going to read it because I didn't write it myself. So, as Bill Crosby once said, decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. Here is a tip to combat fear of everything. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that your happiness and growth is more important than that. Do something every day that stretches your comfort zone and helps you face your fear. Last but not least is number 11, and that is the need to stay busy or to be busy. Busyness is often confused with pro productivity. There are two different things. Busy is running in place on a treadmill. Uh, productivity is actually getting somewhere worthwhile. These days, technology gives us the constant feeling that there is so much to do and not enough time to do it. We are always connecting to something that wants our attention or something that could be done. The feelings create the feeling creates stress. The more behind you think you are, the more stressed out you're going to feel. Stress is not good for you. It, it makes it difficult to think, connect with others, and associate with the plethora of physical ailments that lead to unhappiness. Tip, stop trying to be busy. Put first things first and give up the rest. Organization, meditation, Improved time management and efficiency and a change of perception are always uh, ways to manage stress. You must learn to let go. Release the excess. You are never able to do that at all anyway. Folks, these are the 11 uh, habits you need to do that you need to give up to be happy in life. You need to actually never ever give up in life itself. But in order to be happy, you need to somehow separate yourself from people that will bring you down, people that knock you down. Because remember this, no matter who it might be, a co-worker, a parent, a friend, if you get knocked down by a person, you are strong enough to get up. You need to dust your knees and get up and move forward. And as time and time after again that you get knocked down, and if it's the same person over and over again, my friend, it's time to move past that person. Surround yourself with other people in your inner circle. You need to be around positive people to get positive results. That is a given. 
recap these 11 things. The number one thing is just you need to stop worrying about everything. Worry about what you need to worry about in your own life or in your immediate family, like your husband, wife, and children. Everything else is not for you to worry. You cannot carry all the weight on your shoulders in the world. Number two is constant, deliberate people pleasing. You need to say no to people every once in a while. That you have to do. It is okay to please others, but not if it's going to affect you on being happy. Number three is procrastinating. Folks, if you know something has to get done, you need to do it to be happy. I know so many people in my own inner circle, including family members, that will procrastinate on everything. You can never make plans or get decisions made without having to think about it or whether I'll get back to you about it, that type of response I will get, or I'll do it later. Do it now, get it done, and you have later for free time. Number four, living in the past. We cannot live in the past, especially people in recovery. You cannot live in the past. Today is your day. Today and tomorrow. The past is gone. You can't change the past. But folks, no matter who you are in my audience, you can live today and tomorrow, and you can have learned from the past, but you cannot live in the past. The past is gone, folks. Don't live in the past. Number five, always looking past the present moment in anticipation of the next. For example, you're in the shower thinking about your coffee. Why are you doing that? Or while you're having your coffee, you're thinking about your commute to work. Why are you doing that? If you're having your coffee, enjoy that coffee. If you're taking a shower, enjoy the shower. Don't think of anything but how to scrub your body and your hair. And if you're uh, um, ready for your commute, think about your commute. Don't think about your commute home already. Number six, judging others. Folks, no one anyone is better than uh, you or you better than them. And for example, this person that's cleaning the bathroom at McDonald's is equal to you if you're the CEO of a company. You are all equal. We are all equal in the eye of God. Number seven, comparing your story to everyone else's. It is good to notice that what others are doing from time to time. After all, that is what helps us outline what we don't want to do in our own lives. Don't compare your stories. Don't. If somebody else is having misery, you don't need to. I mean, here, another example is we have people in our own family. No matter what you've told them that you've maybe uh, experienced in the past, or that maybe that you had a cold or whatever, these particular family members, no matter what, have the identical story but they always have to do one up on you. Don't compare your story to everyone else's. Number eight is shame. Shame is deep, debil debilitating emotion and complex in its roots. Its cousins are guilt, humiliation, demoralization and denigration, and remorse. After experiencing a traumatic event, whether recent or in the distant past, shame can haunt victims in a powerful and un often unrecognized matter. Please, you need to give yourself time for forgiving yourself and others. And the more time you have to focus on your mind, the happier times you'll have. Number nine, disorganization and laziness. If you get out of your bed, folks, start getting in the habit of making your bed. When you know you have to walk the dog, do it religiously around the same time every day. Shut up. Disorganization and laziness is cousins with procrastinating. Fear of everything. You need to get past your fears. Get each and every day, get a little closer into your, uh, out of your comfort zone. Get a little closer out of your comfort zone. Try different new things. If you know uh, that it might get you a little shaky, do a little baby step. Including if you know that the ocean scares you, just swim in the pool in the shallow end to get used to the water, etc. You know what I'm saying, folks. And number 11 is the need to stay busy. You need to be busy in your life. People that just sit around and watch TV all day and eat bags of chips 
It's not good for their health. It's not good for their mind. My mind constantly has to work. I have to do things constantly. And yes, for people like myself, maybe even you, if you're on the internet too much, that is not considered keeping your mind busy. Busy would be reading. Busy would be uh, doing constructive things, hobbies. Uh, writing a book, writing a blog, doing a show like I do. These are all busy things, folks. Folks, it's pretty simple. A sober today, I promise you, will give you a better tomorrow. That is a no-brainer. If you stay sober, each and every 24 hours time will go by. Your recovery will fly, uh, and you'll get more and more set at being a sober person. And if you start thinking positive in your mind, you will prom probably and most definitely see positive results right away. But the negative thoughts, the negative feelings give you negative results. And all the changes that people tell you to have to make or you should make, and even including myself when I tell you about different changes. Remember, all these changes don't happen overnight. They all start with little baby steps, one by one, little steps and eventually you're going to start seeing things like changes in your life that include health changes, financial, relationships, spiritual. A lot of changes will happen if you concentrate on making those changes, folks. Please teach your children to say no to drugs and alcohol and be the role model that you're designed to be by the eyes of, in, in the eyes of God. Your kids look at their at you as their hero. So if you're going to have to smoke and drink, don't do it in front of them because when you do it in front of them, you're saying it's okay to do it. Never ever use profanity in front of them. Never ever physically abuse a person in life anyway. What you, uh, what you do in front of your children, your children will do in their future life. Lead by example. Folks, I hope to God each and every one in my audience out there has the best day of their life, but I hope and I really do pray that each and every one in my audience has a sober rest of their life. And may God bless you.